after spending time with the Bacolod Flyboys, recalling the good old days of flying, I continue to hark back to Bacolod's golden age, marked by the presence of these shiny toys. I was able to spend time with the Bacolod Classic Car Club and check out the collection they kept over the years. I was treated that day to a handsome assortment of Benzes, BMWs, some American classics, and even some rare finds. Of course, this is only from a handful of the club members. Anthony, why is it that there's so many nice uh, classic cars here in Bacolod? Uh, in the 60s, when there was a sugar boom in the early 70s, uh, there were a lot of uh, European, especially Benzes and uh, American cars here in Bacolod, in Negros. This was when sugar was uh, uh, very highly priced at the time in the market. That's true, that's right. But what got you started into these uh, classic cars? When we were younger, you know, growing up in, in Bacolod, uh, you see all this, uh, you know, I grew up in the 80s during my high school years, and you see all these nice cars in Bacolod, you know, and you dream of owning one. So that's probably why I've been drawn to, to collecting, you know, uh, classic cars. Yeah. yeah. So the club started about maybe five years ago, I would say. Of course, the the older guys, say like Tito Philip, Tito Manolet, and Tito Bomber, you know, they've been uh, at it. <laughs> this, you know, old uh, American yeah. cars. Yeah. Well, if anyone knows more about the history of car collection here, it would be the older guys. I talked to Manolet and Bomber about their stately rides. So, Manolet. You, you're one of the guys who have so many old cars before. Why did you think of uh, keeping these old cars? Well, uh, because of my dad, uh, he loved old cars and it seemed to have grown on me. Okay, so you inherited the passion. Yes, I inherited <laughs> the passion and also Great. the passion of Bacolod City in where uh, old cars prevailed. You know, oh. every time a new car from the U.S comes out or in Europe, Bacolod seems to be the first one to have it. <laughs> I don't know why, but it, it always has Even it. before Manila, huh? you get the yeah. first order. <laughs> Even before. Take in consideration the black car. Okay. It's owned by uh, Bomber, Psycho. And you've kept it in good shape, huh? That's yeah. a 72. It's a 1972. Oh. And it's a Mark IV. The Mark IV embodied luxury and elegance in the 70s. It retained a radiator-style grille, hidden headlamps, and the Continental spare tire decklid of its predecessor. And this one is a town car. Yes, this is a 668. Yeah. A 68, yeah. And whose is this man? Yours also, my God, you have uh, <laughs> you have purchased all the Lincoln Continental cars, I think, in the Philippines. Maybe you have 10 more in your garage. No, I, I have six. Built like a tank, but with a very comfortable ride, the Lincoln Continental was created during the glory days of American luxury sedans. Because uh, in the 60s, as Manolet said, uh, Negros had uh, the most number of Lincolns and Cadillacs right, right. per capita. Mm -hmm. I'm collecting, especially if the history of the car is from Negros. Oh, so you want to buy back all the cars that was formerly? As, as much as possible, yes. Yeah. So, you know, the history is... It was definitely a very fascinating way of preserving the heritage of the place. And these gents are doing a pretty good job. They have even passed on the interest to the younger generations of Bacolenos. I spot a nice-looking Jaguar, but with a different mark. So I thought I'd ask its owner, Giles, about it. You know, I thought earlier it was just a regular Jag, but tell me why it's, it's not. no regular Jag. <laughs> it's a Daimler Double Six. Yes. So what they do is they get the top of the line Jaguar XJ12, and they send it off to Daimler to do the coachwork, the interior, the grille, the chrome. 
And as you can see on this car, you can't find the name Jaguar except, except for the wheels. Yeah. Everything on this car is a Daimler. And I know this also, huh? I mean this hood, uh, this uh, grill, I, I haven't seen anyone with this kind of grill. It's a Daimler specialty grill. When yeah. They changed the Jaguar grill and they put a Daimler. But why was this your choice of car to restore? Actually, this was not a restore. This is a mint condition. Un oh, everything is original. Everything is original. So, it just happened to be at the right place at the right time. Uh, a good friend of ours decided to just give it to us. So, it's been under my care and my dad's care. Yes. It's a very fun car to drive. Is it difficult maintaining it? These engines are built to last. This car is a 1989 model, but this engine was made in the 60s. And the only difference between that engine and this one is that this one is fuel injected. Mm. They didn't change anything at all because it's that good. If we give you another car to restore and keep, what would it be? I would think a uh, 1963 Corvette C2. Corvette. It's my okay. dream car. <laughs> yes. Of course, the excitement of restoring these old cars can only be matched by the thrill of driving it, as I learned from JB. So JV, how long have you had the car? Um, maybe a year. Well, actually, it's not mine. I just borrowed it. I, I, I got it an hour ago. <laughs> I used it. Runs very well, and then drives to the mountain several times. Very. very so fun. you're really taking it around? Oh yeah, we, we drive. Um, our, our group here we get together on Sundays, and then we go to the mountain. Like Mashal, yes. You really feel the road. You yeah. feel the. Um, the car, you're connected to the car. You also don't lose out. Uh, it, it becomes like an investment because the value goes up. You'll be surprised. Never goes down. Never goes down. A lot of time, patience and skill goes into car restoration. And I was very happy to meet people who appreciate history and are passionate in keeping these old machines alive. Up next, I continue to reminisce about the past, taking the planes to Sipalay and Cadiz, where we relive the heyday of flying in Bacolod.